Hi, my name is Ashish and in this video we will see what is Serverless 360. Well, Serverless 360 is a platform to manage and monitor multiple Azure serverless components which are part of the enterprise application. Okay, so to emphasize more what is Serverless 360, it's a cloud management platform engineered for Microsoft Azure. None of my applications are using a single component. They are using multiple Azure components to make a complete stack. And it would be not feasible for me to view each and every component associated to an application in a single window as of now. Okay, let me show you an example of the complex business orchestrations that are built using Microsoft Azure serverless technologies. So if I move forward, you would see this is an example wherein I'm using Event Hub, I'm using uh, the Azure Relay services. I'm using Azure Storage. Event Hub emits an event to the Event Grid saying that the capture file is created. And then the Event Grid uses the Azure Relay to send this event to the on-premise system. On-premise system will calculate the energy consumption for that batch of energy usage and drops it into a service bus queue. Then my on-premise system picks up the batches in storage. Same way, Event Hub ingests the stream of data, uses the capture feature to write this in batches to the Azure storage. And if I move forward now, you would see another example. This is a new order request. My logic app would uh, listen to the queue to process new order. I have Azure function to validate the new order and return a status. When the order is submitted with status to service bus topic, Topic has topic subscriptions, rules to define to handle messages based on the status value. And if I further move forward with another example, you would see that Logic App listens to the queue to initiate the onboarding process. Let's say I have my new employee joins the organization. My Logic App is listening to the queue to initiate the employee onboarding process. My Logic App listens to the queue to initiate the insurance process. All right, if you have a look at this slide, the real Azure support challenge is the high total cost of ownership because mostly the knowledge of solution is being held by my DevOps team, development team, and the architecture team. First and second line of support team have a very low knowledge of the product. And that is why they have to call my DevOps team, development team, and the architecture team to work on each and every single issue to support my application now how how do i resolve it or how do i make uh, progress in it by onboarding my application to serverless 360 i do this so well, let me show you the another slide now the real azure support challenge is solved because if you do the percentage breakdown of support nowadays only five percent of knowledge is being held by my first and second line of support team 25% knowledge is with the DevOps team, 60%, around 60% of the knowledge is with the Azure development team, and the 10% of the knowledge is being held by architecture team. How can I safely resolve more support issues to the left by increasing the product knowledge from 5% to 50%, which should be the aim of each and every application development team, so that most of the issues are being resolved on the first and second line of support. And so there are three core pillars of Serverless 360, which are business applications, then the business activity monitoring, and then the Azure documenter. Business application, it would create an instance of the business application and manage its Azure resources. And then there would be business activity monitoring, which is used to track and monitor the business flow at ease with the pluggable components and then we have azure documenter which generates high level technical documents in different dimensions for the azure subscription so so but if i create those resources in the azure portal i cannot see them in the single window i would have to browse through different subscript different windows and different resource groups to look at them let us explore more on this. Let me log on to the Azure portal and take it from there. I am logged on to the resource portal. And if I create multiple resources, right? If I create an event hub, Azure SQL, Logic App, Function App, if I click on all resources, it will show me the all resources. 
but if I create a stack of an application, I would not be able to see resources from different subscriptions if I have multiple subscription or different resource groups in a single window. And right? I'll have to open uh, a new tab or duplicate tab to look at the resources. So I will not be able to see the resources in a single window wherein I can see the monitoring, health, or different parameters of that resource, right? So that's where serverless 360 comes into picture. All right, now we'll see how we can log on to serverless 360. So open up another browser on, go on to Google and type in serverless 360. You would see this link. Right, so you will have the option to log in or start a free trial. If you will click on start a free trial, you'll have to enter your name, your work email, then you will be able to log on to this portal. So when you will log on, you will see these options. Okay, you'll have business applications, you have business activity monitoring, you have Azure Documenter. In this video, we will talk about business applications. You click on manage and you will see the page loading. So the reason you see this, then I have uh, these multiple business application management or uh, business applications created. That is why you see all of these uh, features. So if I can click on one here and click on resources, you would see that I created all of these resources, functions, functions apps, logic apps, service bus queue, SQL databases, storage blob container, storage files, storage tables, web apps for this one particular application, right? So this is the business application management option and this is the business application group in which I have created one business application, which is BAG COVID win or you can give it any name. Then here are the resources which are associated with this application. In the Azure portal, these resources, you will not be able to see these resources like this, stacked in one stack in one portal. You would have to go into the Azure portal and you would see these resources, although they are created in different subscription, different uh, resource groups. But whether or not they are created in a single subscription, you would not see them in a single window. That is why we create a connection between serverless 360 and the Azure portal. And we see those applications stacked inside one business application. It's a kind of a logical group of the services from different Azure subscriptions, regions, or resource groups that would represent my line of business application. How do you create a connection between serverless 360 and Azure portal? You would go to service principles and I've already added one. So you can click on, I'll show you what all is needed. So we need a subscription ID with which we are creating all the resources and with which we want to make a connection. Then we have a tenant ID, then we have the client ID and then we have the client secret. If you are not aware how to access and get this information let me show you that so when you go onto the azure portal you go to your subscription whether you have pay as you go or you have the enterprise enrollment you go to the subscription id and you, here you see that this is the subscription id in which you're going to create resources and from here you can copy it right so if you go under your azure active directory and you would click on app registrations all right so i created an app called serverless 360 you can create it with any name right so this is your tenant id from here you can get the tenant id as well now if you would when you will create an app you will go to your clients and secrets and here you would see the Client secret. So when you create it, let's say I give it a name. Okay, let's go with that. You click on add. Right, so you see 
the value and the secret ID. All right, and that is here, the client ID and the client secret. Right, you can add in here, then you will click on next. You would see the access policies. Choose the business application group that can access the service principal to manage Azure resources. So you will choose your business application groups that you have created. I'm talking about these. All right. And let's say if you only have one and then you create another business application group and then you want that business application group to have access. We can update the service principle by going in here and you know click on edit and then you can select the new business application group as well click on update and after refresh you will be able to see it here now when you when all this thing is done and when you click on resources you would see that i have three azure functions which are part of this application group then you would see that i have functions app I have logic apps and then when you click on that one particular resource you can click on any resource you would see a dashboard for that particular resource and then you can check every information in that dashboard specifying about the run history about the trigger history if there is an action required or monitoring right so in here I'm through one window I'm monitoring every resource right and if you will click on this and you would see the dashboard here you can configure the dashboard in here for all the resources that are stacked and then if you will click on service map here is the service map explaining how these resources are tied up to each other and how they are related now if you would go to the automated task you can configure the automated task you can check the task history of every automated task here and if i click on the overview you would see the overview section as well that okay this business application these are the associated resources this is how uh, the monitoring would show up that if any one resource is not healthy or is giving an aborted warning or an error you would see here on this one window right so we don't have to go to azure portal again and again and look for every resource to find okay which resource is faulty and then working it you can just on this single overview section of a business application group you can check the health of all the resources that are part of this business application group and then here you can check the recent activities as well I have already told you about the service maps and how easy it would be for the support guys to work on issues and be more productive to look and uh, focus on their work and you know they don't have to go to the Azure portal again and again and look for different resources they can just come to my serverless 360 if it's integrated and then you can see they can have a look and feel of the dashboard monitoring automated task they can run it they can configure it from the here it would make their life really easy and that is what serverless 360 is all about i hope you liked this video if you have any more queries about serverless 360 you can mention them in the comment section and i'll see you guys in the next video